Hello. Hello. Uh, are we going to talk about the same thing we did in the vlog recorded on my phone or? Uh, that is now lost footage. We are going to start again. This is a new podcast. Do we talk about that Don Fry thing again as well? The Don Fry thing, the one in which he basically just tells the other person to go suck an egg and uh, a cucumber because that other person, a fan of his, said that he wants to be both a wrestler and a Hollywood actor. So he's like, you can't be a wrestler, you're not a man, and you're not a man, so you yeah. might as well become a Hollywood actor and suck some producer's cucumbers. So... Yeah, that thing. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> that was a badass thing to say. That was a badass thing to say. He's a ballsy guy. He is a ballsy guy. He, be like him. Don't do him, but do stuff like him. <laughs> <laughs> Why not do him? Why not? He's got a bulldog. Uh, he... What is wrong with that guy? Oh, hmm. he's trying to exit. There was this video where a guy told Don Fry uh, to meet him outside the sta- outside the UFC stadium so he can fight him. And what Don Fry did was he just punched him so hard in public that that guy was knocked out then and there. <laughs> Don Fry, that, that was Don Fry like right now. Old Don Fry. <laughs> he punched a younger guy so hard that the guy was knocked out then and there. <laughs> Be like Don Fry. But that isn't also one of the topics that we're talking about. Um, it also shows that you don't pick fights with Don Fry. We were also talking about the... Uh, a very long tangent about video software. Mm-hmm. Literally. Yeah. Like a very long tangent. I mean, we talk about open source, open source video editing software, which includes Shortcut, not Shortcut, Shortcut, although it's a good name, shortcut. very well used pun. Caden Life, Open Shot, and... You know, After Effects. No, 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 After Effects is basically paid. So is... Um, you were talking about Blender as well, but Blender is not a video editing shop. It does have options by which you can actually use... Uh, you can actually do blending of some videos. Yeah, uh, that option is usually used for rotoscoping. <laughs> or, you know, uh, when you create a 3D model, you can use your videos as a reference for animation. But that's the thing. The biggest issue with... The biggest issue with Blender is if you're trying to use it as your mean, if you're meaning your video editing with Blender, you're only going to be limited to a small duration as far as video editing is concerned. But I'm not saying that you shouldn't use it. Obviously, it's for a specific purpose. It has a specific use. Caden Live, for example. Caden Live has a very involved, very intense video editing facility. Once you've made the video, then you could use Caden Live to edit portions of it, you know, splice out portions and then edit them into giving it more weight. You have in, in short as well, which is free, in Clidio, or Clidio, or Clidio. No, I don't have that. But uh, It's uh, an online video editing software. Oh no, that's uh, uh, the other, the one you're talking about, you can only make uh, one minute clips with it. On Clidio? Yeah. Uh, I think they, uh, they ask for money as well. Hmm. For longer than one minute. Oh, there is the oh, there's one version of uh, this video editing software which allows you. Oh, ev- it's a cheat, but it's a good cheat to have because TCA is a project of Network for Human and Social Development, which is a not-for-profit. It is basically a very useful. It's very useful to have a not-for-profit because a lot of softwares, a lot of these um, so a lot of these facilities become free okay. they're just given free to be used by non-profits like Canva is free for non-profits yeah. Microsoft has a lot of features which are free for non-profits mm-hmm. oh, no, you told me about Canva you guys can use most of the features for free you guys don't get the watermarks as well no we don't no we don't without no, the watermarks don't. as well so, to every other shithead who's paying for Canva Pro, sucks to be you that... Sucks to be you if you don't have a non-profit. But on a serious note, do make a non-profit. It's a very good incentive to have. How do you get the approval for non-profit? I mean, are we talking of Pakistan or are we talking of other countries? For, every, for everyone in general who 
runs on an NGO. Well, in part, I mean, you got to specify it. You need to register it as a non-profit in the registration mm. body. In Pakistan, it's the Charity Commission. Mm. Now in Pakistan, actually, um, um, now in Pakistan, the Islamabad Charity Commission is out now opened mm. there. It's responsible for the ones in Pakistan. But it's any, any charity registration authority in any part of the world. Mm. What you need is a constitution, right. which is also called, oh, by the way, it's either called Articles of Association or Memorandum of Understand, or Memorandum of Understanding. MOUs are contracts. Mm -hmm. You need to show that you have a contract with an international, an international NGO or an international charity. Okay. The Articles of Association exclusively talk about how mm -hmm. it's going to function. What is its objective? Who are involved in it? And it's a very generic template that's available for all countries generally so right. you could pick any template up it functionally serves that purpose you need the list of board of directors who are the specific body who are the executive body in it right. you need a list of the general body mm -hmm. because as a charity it has a general body who will benefit who will be the net beneficiaries of that entire project they right. could be the members who join in it as lifetime and such it could be it could be say People who agreed to your cause mm -hmm. because you, you know, like you did a project over there, so you set up a community service organization focused on them. So they're the general body. Then you need the identification documents of each person. Mm -hmm. That is in developing countries and underdeveloped countries. In developed countries, the name and their identifier is enough. Okay. Although having photocopies is a, is a good idea. It's always a good idea to have. Furthermore, you need to have a confirmation that you have a bank account. So you need an account maintenance letter. <clears throat> an account maintenance letter basically talks about the fact that this account is being maintained by this organization since yada yada yada. Right. If you have an audit, that is also a good thing to have. But that is... So it's like you scan all the documents and send them. Yeah, scan you the... scan them, you print them. You fill in an application form that is required by the registration body mm -hmm. and then you, you know, like... And then you wait for Canvas approval. And then you wait for, yeah, their approval. Uh, yeah. It's, it's not that difficult. There is a certain duration that is spent in the reconfirmation stage. Can you use it for free in the reconfirmation in the stage when it's being configured and all? Or? No, no, no. I think it's better in the long term to have an NGO because one, there are a lot of tax write-offs that incentivize it for everyone. Mm -hmm. Tax write-offs and tax breaks are a very big part of the NGO culture. For another, there are things that most for-profit companies can't do but an NGO is capable of doing. Okay. Like think about, um, let me put it to you this way. Um, think of it like, like foundations. So you have the Rockefeller Foundation, you have the mm -hmm. Carnegie Foundation, you have Rockstripe. Rockstripe, Trudeau Foundation and such. So if a for-profit company mm. is giving a scholarship, for one that is considered illegal because of the legislative the legislative disagreement and mm. inherent inherent production of a hegemony, mm. a, an oligarchy essentially. So you have a very very oligarchic hegemony that is being supported and endorsed because the for-profit companies are the ones giving the, the scholarship. What like, for Russia types? Basically. <laughs> or, um, it's communist. Um, like, think about it. Like, Russia what, had oligarchs. Russia had oligarchs, but communism is principally yeah. a very oligarch-rich establishment, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, no. Like, power is circle... Like, if everyone the is... The leadership of the proletariat is pretty much the same thing. Yeah. You have... Uh, a ruling class that calls itself the working class, but it's pretty much not the working class because they're not Muslim. Yeah. I mean, in the long term, they're just people ruling over you, calling themselves Muslim. And in the long term, adding furthermore to that aspect, like the reason why for not for profits come in, they are by they are not bipartisan. Mm -hmm. They are apolitical. They're non-partisan. That's why an NGO can go over to any country and work independent. It, it is 
required to register itself with both the host country from where it originates and also the recipient country where it is acting upon the no objection certificate essentially all right and the reason why i mentioned this is like donated box mm. if a for profit company a for profit company can easily sell donated books readings did that yeah. readers point literally <laughs> does that you know yes man, i know that that's a blessing though <laughs> my donated books that were meant for the underprivileged and readings which reading reading started off with donated books before it became a for profit it was always for profit but they used to get that service to you to you the recipient that service is not to be charged that's why we have a library land books instead of selling them oh. actually taking it a step further that's why we set up this youtube channel in the first place it's activism that's why we emphasize open uh, open books open access books and that's why you are also Promote open source libraries as well, online as well, like archive.org and everything. Hmm. Archive.org needs to be supported, in my honest opinion. Yep, get it. Good. I found good MP3 songs there. Yeah, na? So true. Uh, I used to download our our albums online, but all of those blogs got removed, which used to upload those our our albums, and the free share was shut down as well. So archive. Dot org is my only go-to place now. There are other things which also makes archive. dot org a really good place to go. There was this blog. I think it's still up there. Sophie's floorboard. Oh, they, they yeah. They used to upload good old math rock and emo songs. Mm. The, you know all the classic emo songs from the nineties and the eighties up till now. The grunge era emo songs as well. They, they still upload them. Uh, and I think when Sophie's floor board will close down, I'll still be satisfied because Archive. dot org keeps all her stuff there. Because of updated. the Wayback Machine, they're yeah. shutting. They, I read up somewhere that they were they they were late. There was a judicial injunction against the Wayback Machine. The, uh, the U.S. Millennial Copyright Act. Yeah. They like to shut down stuff on the internet. We have the PTA in Pakistan. They like to shut down everything as well. I mean PTA banned adultsfilm. dot com, but PTA, unlike DMCA, has far little authority. The biggest problem with it, I actually kind of like. I have to give credit where it's due. One thing which makes PTA far better than most other authorities, as long as it isn't porn, it's fine. Why does it ban adultsfilm though? Because porn. <laughs> adultsfilm isn't porn. Oh, very much. So. It's mainstream television. <laughs> no, it won't. It's it's a uh, it's a show for people who are eighteen and above. So, porn, haram. Have you seen any pornographic elements in Venture Bros or uh, Dream? Course? It is suggestive. Therefore, it is haram. I mean, it has jokes regarding boners and all, but a, a boner? <laughs> haram. <laughs> Haban. Ha 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 ha. I'm censoring that, right? <laughs> that is why he was cast away from heaven because you're not. Uh, never mind. Yeah. Wait. Uh, what is the point of all the words in the field? You're not allowed to be horny in heaven. You technically don't have what any. Do you don't have anything between your legs. What do you do with those seventy-two words? You acknowledge them. That's it. That's it. Uh, isn't it better to acknowledge girls online and you know, in person as well than 
pretty much you don't touch them. Uh, put just... simply become an incel. Yeah, just <laughs> look at them and he's like good. You look good. That's it. Yeah. I yeah. can't do anything to you. Just be an incel. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same thing we do here on earth. Lol. What is the point of going to heaven if you can't get laid there? If you can't even get laid here. <laughs> I think it's meant to be taken figuratively. I guess. I mean, technically, the way they describe hell, it seems a lot in mo- it has a lot in common with the uh, rigor mortis. To be honest. <laughs> right. Uh, why though? Think about it. Your body, your go- your body. The way they describe the way the body is completely decaying out. That's uh-huh. rigor mortis, man. That's a dead body left to rot. Uh huh. Like you bury it in the ground, that's exactly what happens. Explaining all the stages of putrefaction. Basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was. I don't. Is that what you're talking about? Is it? Can we talk? Oh, about sure, sure. Concept? You can. You mm-hmm. can. Uh, like Percy Shelley's wo- uh, pamphlet on the origin of atheism. You know? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. There Go was uh, an interview by Richard Dawkins. Right? He actually said something that makes sense. He said that there might be a god, but the god he has read about in religion he doesn't want to agree with because what sort of a sick, sadistic person would create people and then just punish them? If you are born into this world, you're not born with your own consent. Why do you create people and then just punish them for being bad? Like no one has a choice; they just come here and then they go. If somebody asks for being born and then expertly, then it's okay to punish him. But he didn't even ask for it in the first place, and now he's just doing bad, and then he just gets punished in a very sick, sadistic way. Then what's the point? What sort of god is that? Uh, it's <laughs> it's a little more it's a little more nuanced. And then he also that, said, of "What sort of a narcissistic god likes to be worshipped all the time?" Hmm. That's an interesting perspective. I mean, that's a very Greco, that's a very Greco-Roman perspective on religion, isn't it? I mean, it's like modern. <laughs> I mean, it's a very Greco-Roman perspective on religion. It runs on the assumption that all religions are fundamentally narcissistic. I mean, they are, though. They are. <laughs> I mean, I mean, no, Norse religion is a narcissistic. There were the Vikings were very narcissistic people, though. And they were doing it for Odin. Oh, true. Pain. And Valhalla. And Thor. And Thor. Oh, and the Valkyrie. True. Yep, the Valkyrie true. escorted them them to heaven. Oh, uh, and and they go through a rainbow bridge. True. By frost true. And then you had Sigmund, who was an ordinary guy whom a Valkyrie Valkyrie fell in love with. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because he was all brave and mighty and manly and stuff. <laughs> Vikings have a very narcissistic view on life, though. I mean, there's a good narcissistic view on life, but every religion has it. Like me being a Muslim, I feel pretty narcissistic about being a Muslim sometimes as well. Oh, true, <laughs> true. I mean, there is a certain pride to it. Despite you don't get anything out of it, you still feel proud of being what you are. True, 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 true. Interesting. <laughs> oh, uh, actually. Basically, yeah. it's raining. That's why it's a lot. That's why we're basically just shouting out loud over here. And what we're doing is we're laughing our ass off at the fact that there is so much incompetence happening here. The... Oh, just so you know, whenever it rains in Pakistan, the lights die. Everything dies here. <laughs> Everything dies when it rains here. And the fun, the funny part is all the beggars and the homeless people just go away somewhere. Hmm. They don't stay on the streets when it rains. It's like they have a home. Which they actually do. <laughs> <laughs> They're not homeless. Damn it! Come on. You know that library should have a have a copy of American Psycho. It should. It's a very good book. I think it does. I'm pretty sure that there are going to be books that will pop out in the library that will surprise me. American Psycho is a good book, though. You should, and the library should have it. I mean, we have Tom Brown's school days, which you haven't 
छोड़ नहीं है वीव गॉट द गुलाज आकी पे लागो द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द गुलाज आकी पे लागो यून हैव दैट वर्क इट वॉज अबाउट द सब कॉन्टिनेंट इट वॉज सम गाइज सब कॉन्टिनेंट गिवन वी वुड इट एज वेल रिसेंटली पिक्चर ऑफ इट एज वेल इट वॉज अ फेमस ब्रिटिश गाय सब कॉन्टिनेंट uh we have james joyce's biography we have james joyce's uh, dubliners ulysses and a portrait of the artist as a young man i love the dubliners i showed it from the library and i completed it in one sitting oh that's actually <laughs> what it's meant to be it is meant to be just one sitting i was so caught up with the book usually i don't complete books in a sitting that was the only book that i've completed in a sitting <laughs> It reminds you of Richard Linklater's Boyhood. I think Richard Linklater intentionally select you uh, was citing Joyce. No, Joyce has been cited by well, way too many people to come. Martin Gabriel Scorsese. Garcia Marquez has cited Joyce as an influence. Oh, right, that's nice. Yeah, and uh, Mar- Martin Scorsese's The Departed. Uh, that weird Irish criminal guy played by Jack Nicholson mm-hmm. uh, often quotes Joyce in his films. in the film because he's playing uh, he's playing the don of an irish mafia right mm. and he's into joyce so he quotes joyce quite often like most of the time before killing people he quotes joyce of course he does <laughs> of course he does yeah, have you seen the opening scene oh yeah you have that's i have that's a badass scene i was so obsessed with that scene i used to watch it over and over again that's true yeah he used to quote portrait of a young man as an artist in the start of the oh. film Oh that makes sense. And uh, the protagonist uh, that was played by uh the Jason Bourne guy Matt Damon. Matt Damon. He's yeah. from us. He's from Boston actually. He's a Boston uh, born. Boston, right. That's bad. That's mm-hmm. Boston is like America's small version small version of Ireland, right? All the Irish people live in Boston. They even speak with a different approach. They tend they don't end their hours. <laughs> They speak like like the way that they speak over in that movie, right? Uh, the way that they speak over in that movie, uh, The Departed. The Departed. The way Matt Damon speaks and such. That is very on brand. <laughs> That's very on brand. They do a lot of research before acting. Mm. This is the most. The fun thing about actors is. So they actually when they're playing a certain role they actually turn into those people from those ethnicities that's what acting is like there was a Jennifer Love Hewitt film where she played a britisher she being a texan girl she had a proper british accent in that film <laughs> the film was shitty wait though. she's texan yep she's texan really yep she's she's well known for being a texan Jennifer Love Hewitt the 90s Jennifer girl. Love Hewitt Is a Texan? What the actual flying rat lasso driving? Remember like, the Alamo? Fuck! She looks Texan. She, 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 she doesn't like look Texan. Texan at all, man. She looks generic American. I thought. I swear to God, I thought she was Long Islander. And she's Texan. Jesus. She even has that sweet country accent. Yeah. <laughs> that is such a horrible <laughs> yeehaw, man. I mean, Matthew McConaughey is from Texas. Uh, he has a Texan accent as well. Look, I am invisible. <laughs> he doesn't sound like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, but the way that Matthew McConaughey is played, portrayed in, in True Detective, though. <clears throat> I like Matthew McConaughey's role in that film, uh, Days and Confused by Richard Linklater. That was his debut film. Uh, the film that has his dialogue, which which has been cited in many memes as well. Uh, what was that? The first time. I think you've seen that meme. Where he's driving a car and he's just looking at. Oh him. yeah, yeah, <laughs> true, true, true. Have you seen? Have you been confused? I haven't got round to it. It's one of those films that actually kickstarted most of the Hollywood. Casts for careers like uh, it was Ben Affleck's first film as well. It was Matthew McConaughey's first film. It was Life Tyler's first film. Life Tyler, you know, the daughter of the Aerosmith guy. Oh. It was her first film as well, and uh, there were a, there were a lot of actors in it who 
got into it for the first time. That's why the Linklater side is one of the few very good film makers who brought more people into film. Uh, as if. Although he is a pretty good yeah. director. Have you seen his film Last Flag Flying? I've heard of it. That's a good film. It has Steve Carell, Ryan Carson, and that uh, guy from Matrix, Morpheus. Oh, nice! As those three people as just grunt as gruntled war veterans from Vietnam, who are full of regrets and all, and uh, they have to uh, take a guy's son. Uh, they have to, you know, arrange a funeral for a guy's son who died in Iraq, Iraq, and <laughs> calling it Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping with the role, I see. <laughs> uh, they call it, they pronounce it as Iraq in America, though. Mm. It's a depressing film. I mean, ya doi! <laughs> Last flag standing, ya doi! That's uh, actually, in a way, anti-war. So, yep. It's anti-war, but it shows no war in it. It shows how war, you know, mentally fucks up. War! War never changes! War never changes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good film though. Uh, and then, um, we have Boyhood. Boyhood's a good film. Boyhood is a good movie. Uh, have you seen, uh, I think you've seen School of Rock. <laughs> That's the other great answer. Huh? <laughs> Jack Black. Uh, oh my <laughs> god, true! <laughs> It does have a very school, it has a very actual, honest to God, sincere approach to it. That's true. Linklater is a rock and roll fan. Oh, very rock. much so. Have you seen Fast Benders from the German? Oh, yeah. I tried watching them, but I got bored instead. Isn't that the point of all German films? I mean, have you seen Metrop uh, Have you seen Metropolis, mate? The black and white one about a futuristic city? Yeah. I haven't seen one. I've seen that one. I haven't seen Excellent that one. cinematography, but incredibly boring uh, presentation. There is this other film, uh, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, I think. Yep. That's German as well. That is German. Uh, Dilemma for Murder. I haven't seen that one. That's an art film, though. But right? Dilemma for Murder is also one of those movies as well, which was German. One of those. Uh, it's actually a movie which foretold the way that the Jews. In Germany, the the Jewish community in Germany would be identified. It actually called, gave an idea to the Nazis on what they would do. Uh, okay. huh. Which uh, then this portion is going to be fucking muted and censored why? because YouTube. YouTube has nothing against the Jews, though. But it has everything against the Nazis. I mean, and most of the. This guys working on YouTube are Jewish. But the people who found it. Oh god damn Jewish. it, this entire portion is going to get censored. Why? Fuck! We're not anti Semitic. We love We're not anti Semitic, but YouTube, if you say Jew, Nazi, which also going to be banned. I mean, I trace my roots back to the Jews as well, sort of. But. We are like the Patans are the descendants of God Saul. damn it, I am just going to have to put a big fucking blur over here. Stop. Okay. This entire line of thinking is pointless. Put simply, you can't say the word Nazi. And you. And you. Together? Together. Or in any context connected you just in any use way. them side by side now. So it's going to be censored. When we were talking about them before, the words were far apart from each other. You just. Place them side by side. So that's my issue of editing. Uh, yeah. I'll send you the other video as well. No. If I find a way of sending it. Or oh, if you find a way of sending it's it. It's lost media, man. It's lost. I mean, it will be on my Google, uh, Apple Cloud now. And if ever I buy another iPhone and God forbid anything bad happens to, to this one, uh, I'll find it on Apple Cloud again in a distant time. So you region. have no access to your cloud? Yeah, I have a access to cloud. Uh, but what I'm saying is when I buy a new iPhone or a new Apple product. A pathetic product. <laughs> I log like, on to it. What kind of a stupid, moronic, 
what kind of a moron actually says that you can't transfer files from one thing to another? That's a basic requirement, you stooge. Like, whoever the fuck says that, yeah, that these stupid apps are awesome? No, Apple sucks. <laughs> there is no cross-platform compatibility at all. There is no substantiated capacity to do anything useful with that stupid piece of shit. Fuck <laughs> Apple. Fuck Steve Jobs. I hope that motherfucker gets gets his bones chewed up by fucking maggots. That is what happens to all of us in the end. No, I want his bones to be completely eaten up. I want him to be dissolved. Such that when we dig his fucking grave, we have nothing there but soil. Was he Fuck even, that asshole. Was he even buried or was he incinerated? Most Americans vote for incineration now. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, instead of, you know, burying them, they have these huge cabinets or closets. Where they just where they just keep the ashes along with the person's remaining stuff, like their clothes and all. Fuck that asshole. Honestly. Fuck Apple. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm so happy being an Android person. I'm so happy being a Windows person. I used his stupid Apple phone. I swear to God, it is such an incompetently designed thing. Like there is, you. What kind of a shithead uses that thing? What And the, these assholes, they don't even understand the whole concept. They're so traumatized by their own <laughs> torture that they become narcissistic. Or maybe your few brain cells died while using it. And this can prove that you can fit the coon head on your head as well now. <laughs> because your head shrank. While your brain cells died. Trying to understand the glory of the iPhone. You and the, you and the cringe, man. <laughs> Oh, oh, by the way, cringe, fuck you. You can censor the middle finger with the word cringe. No, cringe is going to co- talk back to me. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> the cringe. You, you will, you'll get it if you see the videos, man. The law of cringe karma. <laughs> <laughs> and the cringe actually winds up always saying cringe whenever I speak. But when it's your turn, it is fully in agreement. Because I'm the president. Because you're the president. And you're the one who's editing the video, so you're under control of what you do. Apparently, cringe has its own way. Filthy Frank used to have those videos called Cringe of the Week, where he would share cringy stuff and review them. Hmm. That was funny. That was Filthy Frank, though. I mean, if this ever gets out to Joji or Filthy Frank, uh, Joji, we want you to know that we want Filthy Frank back. The world is dying without you. <laughs> and YouTube, YouTube seems like a pretty rotten place without Filthy Frank, though. I like YouTube as it is, though. Bring the filth back. Bring the filth back. <laughs> I miss big <that> guy. <laughs> and I miss those retarded dialogues as well. I mean, despite him getting a lot of lot of mental health issues and general health issues regarding all this, why did he stop? He was fun. Maybe he wasn't able to... He did it for like <laughs> four to five years. Why did he not... And isn't it a bit late for him to notice that it was making him ill? There we go. I mean, it takes time for people to finally come to terms with the... Maybe he was a nice guy. He was, he was a nice guy. That's all. Oh, that answers your question. Destructive behavior until they finally realize that, you know, they need to stop. So he stopped being a nice guy and started becoming normal guy. There was a video in which he actually showed naked niggas. <laughs> naked black <laughs> locked in a cupboard or something. <laughs> Oh, this one entire thing is going to get <laughs> censored. And that video was deleted as well. <laughs> so people aren't even going to understand what is being said. He had he had extreme friends though. Very extreme people. Like there was this video called Hair Cake. I couldn't stomach the entire video so I just didn't watch it. What they did was they had oh, this jump, jump, jump. They just shared jump, 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 jump. Do you know how much, how irritating it is trying to 
keep this thing clean. No, it, it's not dirty in that sense. It just they just made a cake out of it here. No. And they fed it to that guy. No. And damn it! He got another. Ill. Damn it! Another bloody fucking sensor. <laughs> That's the fourth fucking time we've had a goddamn sensor on this channel. On this, on this one video. What the mm-hmm. hell? This is our dirtiest video yet, I think. No, this is our most censored video. There are videos like, why? Why? For the love of Papa Frank. <laughs> okay. Keeping it filthy. Keeping it filthy. <laughs> Well said. Yeah. Fair enough. Why do you want to censor the hair cake part? Like, I mean, I, I know what they did was disgusting, but it's not bad according to YouTube terms. Oh man, I just want to, I want to be able to upload it without having someone be a schmuck. Oh god, damn it! Come on, game. Let's just get out of here. Yeah. Oh yeah. There was a Kareem driver who brought me home once from university and he used to say that DAJ and Bahiri are like uh, Pindi Bhatia and uh, because Pindi Bhatia has a lot of holes and Pindi Bhatia Pindi Bhatia I mean, right cringe over there as well Burger uh-huh. cringe <laughs> <laughs> Pindi Bhatia Pindi Bhatia <laughs> Dumb way of pronouncing things, despite I've ne- despite the fact that I've never been abroad. Though yeah, the the funniest part is, I am a bloody foreigner as far as this house, this entire video is concerned. And even I'm like, what kind of place is Pindi Bhatia? Pindi Bhatia. Pindi Bhatia. All right. So uh, the driver said that that place has damaged road, but D H and Bahiri are pretty much similar because they have uh, speed breakers in every. On every like after every kilometer, like, we have this big breaker here as well. <laughs> so now we're finally. Oh my God! Thirty-seven minutes. You'll have to find out the points to censor. Oh no! That's my headache. Don't worry. That's my headache. I'll get that done. You just need to get the lost media sorted, man. I'll send that over to you somehow. And you should. Whilst we are actually waiting for that, um, just. Like and subscribe the channel. On a serious note, though, we want to personally no, thank. We, we want to actually thank all our uh, patron sponsors, subscribers, and all the cars are here, right? Yeah. yeah. Patron sponsors, donors, all the all the people who have believed in us. You know, we're we very patron, grateful. Right? We don't we have a Patreon. We'll need to have at least a hundred people in order to justify having a Patreon. We have thirty-seven. No, no, no. We have thirty-nine. Two more. Yes, next. We start it with six on this channel. Six. I have uh, like four hundred or three hundred ninety-seven something people on my Instagram, but most of them are just bots. (laughs) That kind of sucks. So anyway, um, keep strong. Thank you. And bring filthy Frank back. Bring the filth back. Take care. Bye. Bye.